All right, that feels like a pretty, pretty decent start. Hello, everybody. I just need to make sure that I have these strings laid out here. This is the Ichi no Ito, the thickest one. It's made out of silk, by the way. And this is the Ni no Ito, which is right in the middle, which is made out of something called Tetron. And this is the San no Ito, which is the thinnest one right here. This one's made out of nylon, and I've got them sitting right here because I know, I absolutely know that one of them, one of them is gonna break. Maybe more, you know, this entire thing could just completely, completely fall apart. So, in olden days, a long time ago when, when the shamisen uh, got started, this is called a tsugaru shamisen, by the way which originated in the northern part of Japan known as Aomori. And this particular shamisen was originally played by visually impaired individuals. They're the ones that made it famous. And as they did their warming up, they would do so by playing something called the Bachi Zuke. And there we go. And the Bachi Zuke serves two purposes. Number one is to call a crowd, and number two is to allow them to tune the shamisen as they play. So, here we go. Now that is a basic, basic bachizuke. One of my favorite ways to do the bachizuke is actually stolen from one of the Yoshida brothers, and he starts it out as if it's got a bit of a different time signature or rhythm to it. He goes... He switches time signatures right in the middle then. I love it. I absolutely love it. Hello everybody. If you don't know me, I am Norm, and this here is a three-stringed Japanese instrument called the Tsugaru Shamisen. This is a live stream we have been meaning to do for some time, and I am so glad that we are able to do it today. Today we're going to do it all. I'm going to give you guys an intro to the instrument. We're going to do some playing. I'm going to show you how I practice, how I warm up each and every day. I play about an hour every single day. As we do this, I'll give you a little bit of an intro to the instrument itself, to me, and to everything. I only ask one thing, moderators, please help me out on this. Questions, save them later. We're gonna have an amazing Q&A session later on near the end, so hold off your questions until then. The shamisen itself, let me give you an intro to the shamisen. So the shamisen is an instrument that originally came to Japan through China. And when it came in through China, came in through the area of Okinawa in the southwest of Japan, a very tropical, light-hearted area, and it was known as the Sanshin. It's a much, much smaller instrument, and it's got a really light and playful sound to it. In many of my shamisen performances, I give a bit of an intro to this, and I show that the Sanshin is really like a... It's got a very playful, fun, energetic sound. Now, as time went by, the shamisen made its way up into the area of Kyoto and became more of this shape, the shape that many of us are familiar with today. And the shamisen started being played by the geisha. And so I think for many people, the, the image of the, the shamisen is a geisha sitting on her knees going,
weren't that style or sound as most people would hear it or imagine it. And from there, the shamisen made its way north into the area of Aomori, the Tsugaru region of Japan, and it became this big, thick, heavy shamisen. And this here is made to be played fast and heavy. Many of the shamisen songs you know will have a long part here on the main string that goes like Now the shamisen itself does like to go out of tune. So players will often have to tune as they play. Now that is the basics of the shamisen. I've been playing now for about, oh I don't know. I'd say I've been playing the shamisen somewhere north of half a decade, and I had the good fortune of learning from two of Japan's most famous shamisen players known as the Yoshida Brothers, and have the great fortune of still working with them to this day. I'm actually working on a bit of a project with them right now that I can't wait to share with you guys, but you, if you're a regular viewer, you'll also know that I work with two amazing players called Kiki. And recently, Kiki and I went out into the mountains of Gumma, Japan, and we went to these near abandoned tunnels and made some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music videos. Obviously, you can find links to that on this channel if you're interested. But I'm going to show you how I warm up and how I play. So, again, all questions, we're going to have a Q&A later on. Hold the questions for then. I won't be able to pay that much attention to the chat right now, but my warm-up usually starts with that bachizuke that I showed you earlier. After that, I tend to focus on this area here. You'll notice the shamisen has no frets. And there's no picking either. When you play, it's you're hitting it. You're really like... Like this. So the bachi, which we're going to get into later, this particular bachi that I have right here is $2,000. And I go through about one of these a year, and we're going to come back to why it's like that. I've got a whole range of bachi here as well. And you might be thinking, well, 2000 bucks for one a year? That's absolutely crazy. And we're going to loop back to that as we talk about these shamisen performances later on. But I like to warm up down here. It's a really difficult spot because being off by one millimeter can completely change everything. So my warm up often starts with Okay, not too bad, not too bad. We're doing all right today. Now, we're gonna go into a little more difficult ones that require a bit of accuracy. Okay, did all right on that.
too bad today. All right, we're doing okay. Now the stuff up here is actually relatively easy. Like if I wanted to just go like. Pretty easy. It's not that hard, but it's the stuff down here that requires real, real accuracy because. And watch this, I'm gonna move my finger one millimeter. Totally different. So a lot of my warm up when I'm practicing starts down there and then I'll slowly move down and I'll get into stuff like this. I like to warm up with a lot of stamina exercises. Back in the day when I did martial arts, we always did the really heavy stuff first. We'd do the jogging and the jumping jacks, the push-ups, and then we'd get into sparring practice. We would use every last bit of our energy, and then we would get into the stuff that really takes focus to learn. I like to do that when I'm warming up and practicing the shamisen as well. And this, this requires some stamina right here. And then I like to jump into something that's really difficult. There's, there's one that I've been working on for some time now that I never get perfect. I never get it perfect, but I love how it sounds. You see, I've been learning this from one of the Yoshida brothers. The older Yoshida brother has given this to me as a bit of a challenge. Now, if you watch the video on what it's like to play the shamisen, the tsugaru shamisen, you will know that this is a song that I opened that video with. And we're gonna start by me trying to not completely obliterate it. Here we go. Now, if you're an un inexperienced shamisen listener, that might have sounded okay, but actually that, that was that was not even close to good. That song in its best days, ooh, there are some days where you just knock it out of the park and there are days like today as well. Now, there's some stuff that I wanna show you guys. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff I wanna show you guys. At the end of this stream, I'm actually gonna completely take apart this shamisen this shamisen comes apart into three separate pieces. But to show you guys the difference in quality, what I've done today, let me show you this. This right here is what is called the ATEM Mini by Black Magic. They have been kind enough, this is not sponsored, to provide me with this so that I can do better streams and I can switch over to other cameras with the Star Wars wipe like that and show you guys like close-ups of my hand going. Just like that. Now, one of the most amazing things about the shamisen is that it is made to have what is called kyojaku, really quiet parts mixed with really loud parts. But the microphone I have going on right now isn't really gonna be able to show you that. So in order to show you that, I'm gonna use this ATEM Mini right here. I have hooked it up to this microphone right here 
Things are gonna get really quiet for a second. Don't turn up your audio. It'll blow your headphones out when I get loud. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like when you pick up the sound. Okay, are we ready? We're gonna switch. We are now onto this microphone. And then we'll switch back to this microphone just for a little bit. I wanted to show you guys that Kyojaku, if you will, that lows and highs, that's what the Shemisen's really about. Anybody who's had the opportunity to listen to a Shemisen performance live always says the same thing. They're always like, wow, that's, that's unbelievable, the impact that comes off of it. And that's because this here, the bachi, again, is not really used to pluck. You don't really strum. There's no... There's none of that. It's really the hits. Like that. It's really easy to get carried away. There is so much more that I want to show you guys today and so little time. So I'm going to put this bachi aside. And if you noticed, I have another shamisen here behind me. Now, this shamisen has been prepped so that I can show you guys the difference between a beginner shamisen and a higher level shamisen. The shamisen that I'm playing right now is a much higher level shamisen. And this one here is my beginning, my beginning. It was my beginning. It's my beginner shamisen. The price of this one is a mere fraction of what the other one is. I'm gonna take a peek at the comments here. As I've been playing, if I have missed any super chats or anything crazy like that, I just wanna take a second to say thank you all. Thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you all for joining this stream. We're gonna get this shamisen out. And here we go. Now this here, was my original shamisen. I haven't actually pulled this shamisen out in about, I don't know, maybe two months. And, and, uh, that makes me nervous because shamisen need to be played constantly. So a lot of people ask me, I'm actually, I'm, I'm getting nervous right now because I just realized it's been far longer than I wanted. That doesn't feel good. Oh, please no. Okay, I'm gonna unwrap this as I talk. I, I've got to... You see, if you don't play shamisen constantly, it's not like a guitar where you can just set it off to the side and just leave it be. With a shamisen, if you don't play it, there's a possibility that the skin on it can rip. And I'm kind of nervous. I'm afraid that this one may have... Oh, I was really looking forward to... Oh, God, I could be wrong. I could be... I feel something here and it doesn't feel quite right. Oh no! Alright guys, sorry, we're not going to be doing a comparison between the shamisens today. There it is, right there. Um, I, uh, I see Tim has dropped in a I see Tim has dropped in a super chat there. Thank you very much. Uh, this is wildly unfortunate and very painful to look at. I am... It doesn't help that it's rainy season in Japan right now. And what happens is when these go through too much fluctuation of dry and... Um, when they, uh, I just, uh, when they go through much, too much dry and moist and the humidity and everything, uh, Saranova, thank you very much. You run the risk of a shamisen's skin ripping like this. And 
a skin rip like this is anywhere between three and four hundred dollars to replace. Um, that's so pain. This one lasted me so long too. Like I could probably still put the coma in it. Let me take this coma and put it in. We'll still be able to get sound out of it. It just won't be good sound. So you'll notice already there's a very big difference in the sound. Oh, that's so pa I can't even. Oh. I, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that aside. That is really, that is heartbreaking. Ah. Oh. And this is, this is one of the other reasons when people ask, um, do you, like, how, <sighs> I, I, I can't speak. <laughs> oh, the shot was a little bit too big on that. I knew there was a chance, I knew there was a chance of it going wrong. I just didn't think, I just didn't think that this would, <sighs> I didn't think we'd be dealing with this today. Um, okay, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the, the chamisen and the cost as I pick up my chamisen and put the coma back into it. This here is the coma and it is a bridge that comes in and out. I'm going to start interacting in the comments a little bit more as I do this because I think I need a bit of a pick me up. <laughs> um, Alexandria, cheer up buddy, thank you for showing us. Anyway, here's a little towards the news. Thank you so much. So this one here will never rip because this one here is a synthetic skin. And... There we go. And... This particular synthetic... Now, there are a bunch of different places you can get it for a bunch of different prices, but in the shamisen world, you really get what you pay for in terms of quality. You buy a cheap shamisen, like this shamisen wore out in about three to four years. And the the, the neck was all worn down, the, the, the skin was all beat up, like it just... And the sound quality between this one, even brand new, and this one after a year is night and day. There's a 90% gap in sound quality between these two shamisen. So getting your shamisen done with quality materials makes a huge, huge difference. This is one of the upper level of shamisen that you could possibly get. And I've got it skin with synthetic skin. And I've, I don't wanna miss these here, so where has been your favorite place to play so far? Tell us about it and also consider it a donation towards a new skin. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, my personal favorite place to play so far has either been in Fukuoka. I did a performance in Fukuoka last year that was just spectacular. Or Doai Station. Uh, Victor and I did this road trip and we went down into Doai Station and it was absolutely spectacular. And I brought my shamisen. Um, oh, Max, thanks so much for the skin replacement fun. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for the kindness on that. I, you know what? I'm going to say this much. Let, if we're going to do super chats, I say one of two things. Either A, let's do super chats to celebrate the stream. Let's not worry about that anymore. Let's focus on the good. This was due to happen anyway. That skin was like five to seven years old. I'm amazed it lasted this long anyway. And second of all, in lieu of super chats, if you're interested in joining us over on Patreon, we have at least one live stream a week over there, as well as a ton of videos, just a lot of stuff. We have a great deal. I think there's a Discord and everything. We have a great time. I'm gonna cheer myself up and I'm gonna play one of my favorite songs of all time. All right, and then after I play my favorite song, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the bachi and the costs and everything.
And for, uh, I see a comment that says R.I.P. cats for shamisen skin. No, not all shamisen. That's a, uh, it's a very specific type of shamisen. Sunshine actually used snake. Here we go. I don't know if this camera picks up the sweat on my head any better than, than this one does, but whew, I will tell you, that, that heats you up. Uh, a lot of people ask why I keep this thing on my arm, and it is to allow me to slide my arm along the chamisen just like this. Um, I also see I got some Mark Clifford Stream Celebration Fund. Well, thank you very much. We're gonna put it into something amazing and a lot of fun. Also, for those of you who are interested in learning shamisen and need a good and reliable resource, I'm just gonna say Easter egg. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say is Easter egg and you can figure out the rest. Okay, let's not dwell on the bad. Consider an investment for future happiness, new skin, new memories. Awesome. Thank you so much. Tim, always too kind. Again, love it. I appreciate you guys so much. I want to talk to you guys a little bit. Okay, so let's kind of balance it out now. What we'll do is we'll do a little bit of shamisen playing, requests, and a bit of q and I'm going to start putting my attention into the chat here. So if you have questions, drop them in. I will do my best to answer. But the biggest question that I have got since starting all of this is about the bachi right here. So, a while back, I did a video where I talked about how my bachi costs $2,000 US. Not all bachi cost this much. In fact, let me find a, a good example. This bachi here, I'm gonna tap on this, see if we can't get, this bachi here, you could probably land for about five, $600, but if you notice, 
It is considerably smaller and thinner. I don't know how well you guys can see. It is considerably smaller and thinner than this one. And one of the big reasons for this is these are made out of material that's getting harder and harder to get and there are very few replacements. Now a lot of people are gonna be really funny and be like, haha, paint scraper or spatula, no, no, no. These here have just enough flex that they do not break and that they do not damage the chamisen. Acrylic, plastic, all of these, like this here is a plastic bachi. These are used for more like geisha style shamisen, and these, if played with sh the tsugaru shamisen, will break. And you'll get a much more plucky, clicky sound out of something like this. It's gonna be very... Not a, it's not, I don't know how well the mic is picking that up, but to me, that is a terrible sound. Whereas if you take a nice quality bachi, like this one right here, this is a good quality bachi. got a very, very different sound to it. And each bachi produces a completely different sound and feel. Now, these here are getting really difficult to get your hands on because they're originally made out of tortoise shell and now they are coming out with some synthetic materials which they're trying to make either A, last longer, or but in the end, unfortunately, even a synthetic bachi will cost you about 100 to $200, sometimes three or four, and they'll still warp or they'll break or they'll crack. And if they crack or break and they rip through the shamisen skin, then you're paying for much more than a bachi. If it's too hard, it's likely to snap or damage the shamisen. If it's too soft, you won't get a good sound. You get a blah, blah, blah kind of sound out of it. And it's just gonna be absolutely awful. So finding just the right balance, they've made a couple of acrylic ones that aren't terrible, but they wear out really quickly. And so you're gonna go through four or five of those bachi practicing the way I do in a year. So I'd say about maybe 200 bucks per bachi, five a year, you're still looking at about a thousand dollars and it's not gonna sound nearly as good. That's the big challenge with these here. Now, when I first started, this is my first bachi ever. This one here, despite its massive size, again, let's compare it to one of the smaller ones. Despite its massive size, at the time of purchasing this, I was able to get this for about $450. But then my next bachi, as things started to get more expensive, was closer to six or $700. And then I had two, so I didn't need one for quite a while. And then my next one was even more. After that, my next one finally broke $1,000. And my last one, I'd gone maybe three years before I needed to buy a bachi and they're just like, the materials aren't there, the price is high, so that is why. But all is not wasted, all is not lost. The great thing about shamisen is that a shamisen performance, like what I'm sharing with you guys here, brings in easily, easily a third of what I used to make in my corporate job back in the day when I was putting on a suit and going to an office, doing one single performance could easily bring in a third to a quarter of that. So doing one to two performances a month is more than enough to help you keep up the habit of playing the shamisen. Unfortunately, when the world turned itself upside down, all of those lovely jobs just kind of evaporated into air. Most of the shamisen that I have here are actually chipped or damaged in some way and are unable to be used. This one here you can't really see but it is chipped on one side so I can only use this side to play. So let's take a look into the chat section, do some Q&A. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I will peek through as I am doing a bit of playing here.
All right. Do new strings sound very different? Incredibly different. Putting on new strings for the first like day or so will give you a beautiful, beautiful, crisp and clear sound. As strings wear out, they fray and it really shows in the sound. So the basic is C, G, C for tuning. There are other tunings depending on the song as well. And uh, Keech says, wait, Norm, I saved all the questions. Should I send them here or somewhere else? You know what? Feel free to drop your questions in here. I'm going to get to this one from Brooke. Uh, buy yourself some of your favorite dagashi. Thank you so much. Uh, snacks make everything better. P.S. It's Brooke from Brisbane. I know Brooke. I know it's you. I 100% recognize, I know the icon. So, um, all right, let me take a peek through here. Uh, recommendations for students who want to get into shamisen. As I said, uh, take your time. Don't rush into it. There are English language, purely English language resources from overseas. But again, you get what you go for in terms of quality. Uh, Japan is starting to produce a lot more bilingual resources. Again, I'm, I'm all I'm gonna say is Easter egg. There are resources available for people who want to start learning shamisen from the best of the best. That's all I'm gonna say. That is it. So, have you thought about teaching shamisen and its history? Thought about it, but I maybe in ten years. I got a lot to build up yet. So, I like the sound of Nagauta. It is really quite nice. Yeah. Uh, besides the Yoshi Brothers and Kiki, any other players we can look up and get albums from? There's lots. Uh, Asano Sho, a good buddy, he's amazing. Um, there's, there's a lot. Um, how much would be the going rate for either yourself or Kiki to perform at an event, uh, excluding flights and accommodation? That really depends on the event, how many stages, everything like that. The best thing to do is to reach out to us through our websites and we'll get back to you. Flights and accommodations obviously is, is all part of the package deal. Uh, for a more technical question, I've been learning for a couple months now and I was wondering, do you have any tips on getting a clean Hajiki sound? Also advice for practicing Kamashi. Okay, so Kamashi itself, there's a couple different ones, but basically this kind of thing. My biggest advice for anything is watch the angle of the bachi. You want it to have a nice clean angle like this when you're striking. It's also, you don't want to be doing this with your wrist. It's an up and down. You're going to get a lot cleaner sound by doing that. And start slow. Always start with If that doesn't sound clean as you speed up, it's not gonna sound clean. Everything you do slowly has to sound clean one by one. angle of your bachi is going to be very important and practicing getting a clean sound on each note is going to be huge. I am, woo, there's a lot. Uh, da, 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 based on what you've played so far, uh, uh, part of my ignorant, uh, the main part of the shamisen is the twang. I, I don't understand the question. Yes, the, the shamisen has a really percussive element that doesn't come through the live stream. It can't be picked up via the mic. And so you'll feel it a lot more when you're in a face-to-face -face situation sitting in front of a shamisen. You'll actually feel the percussive element of it being played. And it is just amazing. Anybody in this chat who has had the opportunity to listen to it live, especially a Tsugaru shamisen, will let you know that. All right. Can you use a guitar pick? Uh, this is a really common thing I get and the answer is an absolute no because again, as I've said now three times during the stream, it's all about the, the percussive nature. If I were to take, for example, this little tag from my aperture light and go, I, I just, I can't do this. The, you lose the snap and the percussiveness, like the... It's 
got that boom boom. That's what makes the shamisen what it is, and that's why the bachi is so important. 90% of learning to play the shamisen is right here in the bachi. Honestly, this side is easy in comparison to what you have to do here. So. I am trying to keep up with it. There's a lot of stuff coming in here. Uh, all right. From uh, there's a question, Norm. The uh, to switch tones notes, where did it come from? Okinawa or Tsugaru? The huh is just kakegoi. So a kakegoi can signify anything. In Tsugaru Samisen, it can signify a buildup of energy, or it can signify to another player that we're about to change to another section, or it can signify any change. But so, for example, when I'm doing the Batsuzuke, I go huh! Or when I'm doing the kamashi up here, I like to do a hop to transition from one section to the other, like this. carried away and played a whole song there. From uh, has your string ever snapped mid-practice or while performing? All the time. All the time. Like honestly, all the time. The number of times that I've been in mid-practice and had, why do you think I have these three strings right here? These are here because the likelihood of me snapping a string while playing with you guys today was much higher than the likelihood of me opening up that shamisen to find that it was ripped. It's very likely. Very likely. Um, during the performance, I've had it snap twice. Luckily, during the encore of one performance, uh, but it was embarrassing and hard to deal with nonetheless. So, whew. Uh, do you recommend investing in a high quality shamisen or uh, at the beginning or get a cheap one first? Honestly, I don't recommend investing in it at all. Like, if you are not willing to play it every single day, every single week, if you're not willing to put in the time and the care, keeping a shamisen and keeping it in good condition is much, much harder than just owning and playing. It's not like a guitar. I can't just set that there for a couple of days and not play it. If you don't play it, this is what happens right here. This is what happens when you don't play your shamisen and... As we talked about earlier, that can be very expensive to fix. If you snap your butt, if you rip your skin, if anything breaks, it is very expensive to fix. But if you plan on playing for a long time, if you're serious about it, I recommend getting yourself a mid-level shamisen first. It'll last about three to five years before the, this wears down. And then you can choose whether or not you want to get this cleaned up or whether you want to buy a higher grade shamisen. I let mine wear down until it was almost rounded. There were grooves and everything in it, and then I upgraded to a much higher grade shamisen, and the sound is honestly night and day. If you plan on doing performances regularly, you might want a bit of a better one. Never go for the lowest grade of shamisen. It'll wear out in like a year or two, and do not buy shamisen that weren't produced by reputable Japanese dealers. There are shamisen available overseas, and I have had the opportunity to try them, and the quality is nowhere near. Even the, the best one out there is still lower than the lowest grade of actual Japanese shamisen. It is just not the same. Get yourself a proper, you get what you pay for, except for when you buy it overseas. So, whew, gonna try and catch up on these. All right. Um, from Andrew, uh, do the lengths vary? Uh, that one looks much longer. They're both exactly the same length. Um, you know what? Uh, I just woke up and already said, uh, uh, hey, good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, awesome. How long were you playing shamisen before you could justify spending $2,000 on a bachi? Honestly, I could never justify it. It's kind of like any hobby. Before doing shamisen, I was into cars and drifting and everything like that, and that was much more expensive than shamisen. The shamisen itself, my original shamisen, was a multi-thousand dollar investment, and then the bachi was a couple hundred on top of that. But once I started doing performances, basically now my performances just go right back into the shamisen. I actually saved up the money from every single shamisen performance I ever did to get this shamisen. And then everything else gets set aside for bachi. 
I'm, I kind of split up my money like that. YouTube stuff goes into YouTube. Shamisen stuff goes into Shamisen. If I make money off of cameras or photography, it goes back into camera gear. I just kind of divide everything up like that. It's just the way I am. Still saving some questions on note in case there's need to make extra info later, no worries. Uh, how's the process of getting used to this one going? It took me about six months to get a full feel for it because again, there's no, there's no frets. So you really need to feel each and every note. Any recommendations on how to cope with the people living overseas given the current situation? Nope, not at this point. Shamisen live. Other words, if you want a cheap shamisen, get a model from a gachapo machine. Yeah, don't get a cheap one to play. It'll wear out, unless you're not serious. Like if you just want to play around and it's just a toy for you and you're not really serious about learning, go ahead, get a cheap one. You probably won't be playing in a year anyway, but if there's any chance that you think you'll be playing a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, get yourself something better. So, how big is the shamisen scene in Japan? It's surprisingly big, but the community is tight knit. Uh, how did you end up learning from the Yoshi brothers? Seems like a crazy opportunity. It definitely is. I think I have a 25 minute video where I talked about how I got into that. It was a long story. I've definitely also done a podcast on it. Probably have answered the question, but how did you meet the Yoshi brothers? I met the Yoshi brothers for the very first time at a concert at that they did in the States. I walked up to them, I met them, I talked to them, and it wasn't until maybe two years, three years later in Japan that I finally managed to get enough introductions to be introduced to them and plea my case to become their apprentice. Fun fact for those who haven't listened to the podcast and everything, the Yoshida brothers completely turned me down twice. They were like, no, we're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. And it wasn't until the third time when I put my heart and everything on the line that they were finally like, okay, you know, just come over for coffee. We're not making any promises. Come over for coffee, bring your shamisen. We'll, we'll see what we can do. So, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. A lot of ripped shamisen. And you know what? A lot of those ripped shamisen won't be Tsugaru either. I would never, ever, ever, just personally, would never buy a used shamisen. You don't know the condition of the neck. You don't know if it's gonna be warped. You don't know if it's gonna be cracked. You don't know if the body's put together properly. I would never go for a used shamisen personally, just because the risk is unbelievably high, no matter like how good they say it is. You don't know how it's been treated. So, and yes, I used to drift. There's videos on that as well. All right. Uh, do all Patreon levels get Discord? Uh, everything from the mid-level, the $5 level and up all has Discord access. So, uh, how do you write or keep track of a sh song on Shamisen? I knew this question was gonna come up. So, usually you don't. Usually Shamisen songs are passed from the master to the apprentice one-on-one. -on -one. So every song that I've learned, I've sat in front of the Yoshida brothers, usually the older Yoshida brother, and he's taught me the song. However, there is forms of notation as well. If I were just to pull out a random one here. There we go. This is kind of what it looks like. All of those are finger positions and unfortunately it's not quite like uh, sheet music where the sheet music in a piano, you could sit down and play as you're reading the music. It doesn't really work that way. With shamisen, you really need to learn how to feel it out, as I said, because of the, the kyojaku that is involved. So. Is it more common to perform as a duo rather than an individual? Either way. And, da, 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 da. and okay, so, ba, 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 ba. all right. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch over to this microphone and I'm gonna play one more full song called Tsugaru Jongarabushi. This is a song that was passed to me from the older of the two Yoshida brothers and this is a challenge song. 
So I want you to think of this song or Shamisen in general as being like golf. With golf, there's no perfect game. You never get a hole in one every single time, but that is the goal. The Shamisen Bachi's strike is very similar to a golf swing in that sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to this microphone so you can hear the kyojaku of this song. This is Tsugaru Jongarabushi. Mistakes and everything all included. Here we go. That was a very good example of very bad playing. I'm actually glad it turned out that way because right now in this room it is it is boiling hot. It's probably got to be 30 degrees plus in this room. I don't have an air conditioner and even if I didn't I wouldn't want it to mess up the audio. But what happens as you play, and this was a great example of it, is your hand gets very very sticky and covered in moisture and it gets really hard to slide and do everything. And so when a player is playing, especially on stage or in a performance situation like this, it gets more and more difficult to play as the song goes on. So as I got down here, everything fell apart. And this is why I practice every single day. This is why 
live performances are really important. So you can get used to that feeling, get used to the pressure. I'm very, very aware of how many people are sitting and watching. And so this is why we practice and this is why we do it this way. I see a super chat in here from Bex. Shemisen, appreciation fund donation. Thank you so much. I could listen all day. Is there a particular shop you go through for all of your repairs? I personally do everything through Shemisen Komatsuya. And where did that string go? There it is. I dropped the string. And so, whew. Your hands look so fast, almost looks like the video is sped up. Have you started composing it? Yeah, there's a couple songs that I've done like on my own. Oh, that I haven't. I, I, I can't even remember. It is. Also, it is about 8.30 p.m. here in Japan. Getting close to that time where I should probably quiet down just a touch. We'll get into the Q&A section here. If you guys have any, also, side note, I'd like to know how the connection on this has been because once again, as always, I'm using the iVideo. Um, I've just decided to use this for basically all live streams from now on here on YouTube. If you're coming to Japan or you're traveling overseas, I've left it all down below. Their stuff works. Again, not sponsored. It's just I've been using them for what, guys? Two and a half, three years now, and I have only ever had like one problem with them. So thank you, guys. All right. I'd love to see you live one day. I was supposed to be playing in Canada this past May, so. Uh, I wonder how many Japanese people Norm has been able to clueless gaijin trick into the six shamisen. What is the black wrap on your elbow? Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the stream, but this is to allow my arm to slide across the body of the shamisen like this so that I can play really freely and play like this without my arm getting stuck and it restricting my movement. This one here is to allow my hand to slide along the neck of the shamisen just like this. So, there we go. All right, what else have we got? No lagging or pixelating. Yes, nice, really, really not bad for like a little portable Wi-Fi device. I have got to say, that is incredible. Uh, I know you had to wait for the Yoshi Brothers to let you upgrade to your Shamisen. Uh, is that the last one you'll ever need? So there was a video that I did a while back where I asked the older of the two Yoshi Brothers if he thought it was time for me to upgrade to a new Shamisen. And in this video, it was less about me asking him if he thinks, if it's okay for me to buy a new one. And it was more of me asking, are, am I doing well? And are you willing to invest a much longer amount of time in me? Because if you say yes to me purchasing this, then you're kind of saying yes to this apprenticeship that we're doing, continuing for the long term. And I was really happy, you can see it in the video, without hesitation, he jumped in and he was like, yes, yes, I think it's time for you to get a new shamisen. That was a very, very happy moment for me. Um, and, and I'm gonna come back to this question in a second. There's a question that says, what's your thought on pop music covers using traditional instruments? That's a great question. We're gonna loop back to it. Um, Thanks for the awesome stream, Norm. It's 11.30 p.m. here, so I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining. Again, super chats are always welcome, but also for the for what most people are tossing in for a super chat, you could come over and just be a member of our community over on Patreon. We have a spectacular time. I'm live there basically every week, if not two, three times a week. We've got a whole secret Instagram account that we hang out on and everything. I'm actually going to be showing you guys how a shamisen like this one breaks into multiple pieces as we wrap up. So, in terms of the shamisen covers, shamisen covers of pop songs are entirely possible, like a... I 
personally choose not to play them. For me, I want to know absolutely everything there is to know about shamisen and be able to say that I have actually mastered it to some degree before I start infusing pop. I want to be able to show it the proper amount of respect. And that's just my way. That's it. That's all it is. There are lots of people out there who pick up a shamisen and all they want to do is like... Like, I, I was gonna play Mario, I can't even remember how to do it. All they want to do is like Mario and Michael Jackson and stuff like that, and it's a lot of fun. And if your goal is to play with the shamisen, then go nuts. If your goal is to really learn... Ooh. Hitting buttons. If your goal is to really learn the shamisen and get to know the art for what it is, then I would say focus, like I, after learning the shamisen, I replaced all music in my iPod with only shamisen music, and I set basically everything else aside. Um, so it really comes down to the person, but I personally believe pop covers are great if you can truly say that you've mastered the instrument and you know what you're doing with it. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like riding a bicycle versus doing like BMX. Um, if you really want to get good at BMX, you need to know all the basics of riding the bicycle first before you can do all the flips. You could definitely pull off some flips and do ramps and stuff like that, but it's not going to be the same if you don't know all the basics on how to ride a bicycle. And that's kind of my, my thought on that. Uh, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I remember two song covers, though, and Norm wasn't the one playing them. Uh, Norm, do you think we will see you prefer, pre perform the shamisen outside now that lockdown has concluded? Outside is difficult because the soundscape and because uh, weather conditions. Like, if it starts raining, the shamisen is done. Shamisen are very, very sensitive to weather and humidity and everything like that, which is another reason why I don't always recommend them for people living overseas. The climate you live in may not be the best climate for a shamisen, or it might be, who knows? So, whew. I'm hitting buttons all over the place. Um, also, yeah, the second camera I have here is, I just wanna, I just wanna give another a shout out to to Black Magic, who hooked me up with this here, this streaming thing. Um, the Tokyo Lens crew will know that I avoided doing streams like this. Streams are always on my iPhone because I, I didn't want to do the whole capture card and everything. So, yeah, thank you. Computer's getting hot. We uh, might run into sync issues soon. Who knows? Are there places in Japan where you are guaranteed to see a shamisen performance within a week? Yes, if you go to Aomori, you can definitely see shamisen performances up there. Also, in Asakusa, there are two restaurants. The number one I recommend is Kiko, K-I-K-K-O. I've shown it in like a billion videos. It's an amazing place to be. And the other one is, oh lord, I'm forgetting the name of it. It's like right there on the tip of my tongue. It's, it's not coming out. Oiwake. Oiwake, O-I-W-A-K-E, Oiwake is another good one. Uh, Kiko is really good for like one on, it's, it, they're both great. They're both great. It's, it's like comparing apples and apples, so. Do you get any weird injuries from playing? Yeah, my wrist has gotten really bad in the past. There was a period where I thought I was gonna have to stop playing shamisen because my wrist had gotten so bad. We're gonna take this shamisen apart in just a minute. Stream went choppy for a minute. Yes, it did. I have a technical question for Norm. Where is the audio coming from the shamisen? The body or the neck? It really, the sound comes from both. The sound is coming out through here, but it's the resonation of the neck. So a cheap neck will provide, like a cheap neck will give you a boom, 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 boom kind of sound. Or it's like a high quality neck will give you a real bam, 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 bam. I did an entire video on this shamisen being made. If you check out that video, you can actually see us test out the cheap wood versus the more expensive wood. And it's an absolutely incredible thing to see. All right, so let me find some pieces I need here. 
these are the pieces that I need right here. I'm gonna set them aside. And da 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 da. Uh, I stopped by Kiko last time I was in a sex. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Playing guitar and shamisen is like night and day. Honestly, I find that the shamisen has so much more in common with golf than it does with guitar. I played guitar when I was younger and nothing carried over. There's frets and you're strumming and everything. Shamisen has no frets. There's only three strings. There's no chords. There's no strumming. Everything is striking. It's all about hairline accuracy. And the entire time, you need the vibrato. That's the other big thing that people don't realize. Like if I go like this, if I do that exact same thing without the vibrato, you need that vibrato. Absolutely needed. And that's something that you're not really gonna get in guitar. Your hands need to be basically moving. You notice my hand is moving the entire time and it really needs to be like that and something like guitar doesn't prepare you for stuff like that. So, all right, excellent. Uh, where can I learn Shamisen in Japan? We've already covered that entire section. Go back earlier in the live stream, check it out. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> Tim, thanks so much. I would, yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. All right. And there are no chords. So, next thing that I want to show you is a shamisen like this. In order to use it for travel, I'm going to take this shamisen and I'm going to lay it down in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up these here. There we go. And we're going to start taking the shamisen apart. Now this is a delicate and somewhat dangerous process if you do not do it well or properly. It's at this point that I will take out the coma. And I will take off the nail at the end. Now what I like to do is wrap it around here like this. And then at the end, I just pop it on to here and leave it just like that. Now from this point, you need to be very, very careful. I hold the shamisen with my legs like this. I find the seam and I gently tap just like this. And it comes apart just like that. Now these joints are actually absolutely incredible. I don't know how well you can see it in there, but the joint is actually jointed with gold inside of there. And that's where these things here come in. So what you do is you take them and you match them up. They slide in just like that. You need to make sure that you've got the right ones and it's perfectly matched. And there you go. And then each one of these will have its own bag. You don't want to do that too hard because if you do and it snaps or breaks, you can repair this, but the shamisen will never ever sound the same ever again. This one will go on here, just like that. I'll slide these apart. There we go. This one will go in here, just like that. And the last one caps on here, just like this. And that is the shamisen in three pieces. And the interesting thing is, 
if you look carefully, I don't know how well you can see it, this case here is actually built to fit each one of these pieces. They each have their own spot right there in the case. So, whoo, it is warm. We've been going for a while, haven't we? We're gonna take a couple more questions before we wrap up today. Also, when things wrap up, it means the world to me if you guys would also jump into the comments section and leave me something in the comments, I'll be hanging out with you there. So where can I look for a shamisen and how to start? Done a whole video on that. Feel free to check it out. I think it's called What It's Like to Play the Shamisen in Japan or something like that. So. And May, thank you so much for sharing the video on how my Shamisen is crafted. Yes, the Shamisen is a very, very temperamental instrument. Um, I won't say how much I spent on this particular shamisen, uh, but I will say that this new shamisen cost considerably more than my first used car. So it, it was, I, again, everything that I had made from doing performances for all the years that I performed went into one single shamisen. So that's how we got there. So. Ah. Have you ever cut your fingers on the strings? Yes, yes I absolutely have. I've cut my fingers, I've bled, sliding along that main string. Your string, your finger does build up callus, but otherwise, poof, it can, it can be quite, quite painful. So. Do you have to wrap the new shamisen like your old shamisen? Yep. Um, so each one of these pieces of the shamisen, when you take it apart like this, it'll have its own bag for each piece, just like this. So I wrap that around like that, and we tie it, and there we go. There it is. Just stopping by to say you really inspired me to learn to play the Sanshin, that's fantastic. Uh, it seems you're having so much fun. It is, it is a lot of fun, so. Excellent. So with all of that being said, I'm going to start to wrap this stream up. I want to say thank you to each and every single one of you. It's been a lot of fun having you here. I've really enjoyed it. This is a live stream that I have been looking forward to doing for some time. I'm going to leave it up. I don't know. Maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe forever. I don't know. But when this wraps up, I would absolutely love it if you would jump into the comments because I have missed so much in this chat. I have not been able to be as attentive to this chat as I like to be in normal live stream. So if you could jump into the comments section and leave me something there so that we will have a chance to hang out and so that I know that you were a part of this and I can address you as such because I appreciate you being here. To everybody who took the time to join the live stream, thank you so much. To those special few who took the time to leave super chats, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. To anybody who wants to come over and hang out with us on Patreon, I would love to have you there. For those of you who are just happy being here right in the live stream or on the videos, just as happy to have you. This year, the year moving forward, I'm gonna say one thing. If you wanna know an Easter egg, here's an Easter egg. Make sure you have your notifications on. Notifications like the double bell and notifications for the channel in general. There may be one of the biggest and most exciting prize giveaways coming some point in the next 365 days that you could ever imagine. It is gonna be wild, it is gonna be unbelievable, it's gonna be exciting, and it's really only gonna be there for the people who have the notifications on. Also, in the last four or five, six videos, I've actually been doing secret little giveaways for the notification squad. So just being part of that squad gives you the opportunity to potentially win something fun and become part of uh, That's all I'm gonna say. That's it. That's all I'm gonna I, I'm covered, just drenched in sweat. The shamisen is in pieces. This room is 40 degrees. I am so appreciative of every single one of you here. Thank you 
so much for joining. Patreon crew, we're going to be doing a bit of a live stream over on the secret Instagram just to do a wrap up, a hangout, and a gratitude for you guys being here as well. Thank you guys so much. I hope the rest of your day, your night, whatever it is, goes beautifully. And you know, I'll talk to you again real soon.